So now, Matt, seeing as your focus is to oversee on development of new projects, how long do you work on something until you know it's ready to pitch? Um, it's interesting, the development process, which is one of my primary focuses within the company. Um, you know, we are a content company, that's our, our end product. So it's interesting working with the teams uh, internally or working with outside creators because it's got to be something you're super passionate about uh, for a bunch of reasons. The biggest one being you're going to be with it for a long time. Uh, and the buyer knows that and they can feel that when you're pitching. So um, you use uh, a little bit of gut instinct um, about a project you get really excited about. Do you feel you can find a home for it in Canada? Do you feel you can find homes for it internationally? And do you think you're going to care about those characters and about those stories for one, two, three, five, ten years, or whatever the uh, the length of the life cycle is going to be for, for that particular property? Um, and every project's different. Some take six months to a year uh, to get off the ground. Some take longer. Some take two to three to four years. Um, so it really depends on the nature of it. It depends if there are multiple partners that are involved as well. Uh, and that will always impact the, the length uh, for getting a project off the ground. Now, Mark, um, Hyopi is a bit of a passion project, especially uh, talking about its origins. But can you tell me a little bit more about the process and how it uh, how it's come to be? Absolutely. We've been developing Hyopi with the Jim Henson Company uh, for about two and a half years now, uh, and it was interesting because Matt and I actually had the opportunity uh, about four years ago to start talking with the Jim Henson Company about looking for a project that we could develop together. Um, and again, as as the creative any creative exercise, it really has to be the right project, the right partners, the right fit. Uh, and we had talked about a number of different ideas. Uh, and Hyopi was actually a project that was brought to them by a UK creator, actually, uh, a woman named Barbara Slade, who had brought this, this idea of, uh, even it wasn't called Hyopi at the time, but this idea of having a puppet uh, going to kindergarten for the first time and what that's like. Because it's an interesting time for kids, because for many, uh, it's the first time really being away from their parents. Uh, being outside of the home environment, interacting with other kids on a regular basis, building friendships and bonds. Uh, in a lot of places, uh, you know, like many, many regions here in Canada, it's a full day experience going to kindergarten. Uh, so it really is a, a turning point in, in a kid's life. Uh, and so what was interesting, the Jim Henson Company brought the project to us and said, uh, given our experience we had had at Marble Media of uh, great live action kids projects, uh, would we want to take this on and co-develop it with them? Uh, and obviously their great track record in, in puppets, uh, you know, it seemed like a great, uh, great opportunity to come together and co-develop it, which we did. Uh, and right away, TV Ontario, um, who again is, is the lead educational broadcaster in Canada, uh, came on board right away from our first conversation that Matt and I had with uh, Pat Ellingson at TVO of just seeing how this could be a really special, unique show and again, a great partnership between Marble and the Jim Henson Company. Uh, so again, it was about a two and a half year journey uh, of, of really figuring out who Opie was, uh, designing the puppet, uh, shooting a couple of demos, casting, writing scripts and bringing on a great team. Uh, and what's exciting is that here in Toronto, there's a great history of and not only puppet production, but also the Jim Henson Company actually did a lot of work. Fraggle Rock, uh, which was a great show that, that we all watched growing up, was actually produced here in Toronto. And what's neat is that there, there's still a great legacy. Jim loved coming to Toronto to, to work on productions. Um, and there's a great network of people who worked on that show. So, for example, we brought on a, a producer on the show, uh, a gentleman named Larry Merkin. And Larry was actually one of the producers on Fraggle Rock and worked with Jim for many years, lives here in Toronto. So Larry, for example, came on board uh, during development to really help us shape the show and then help put together that team, help figure out what Opie's voice would be. Uh, and he's still on board and he was on board all throughout production and we're now in post-production on that show. Uh, and it will launch this fall uh, on, on TVO. Uh, as well as other broadcast partners in Canada, City Saskatchewan, uh, and Knowledge Network, uh, which is an educational network in, in BC. Of course, at Marble, we don't uh, just do television, so there's a full cross-platform experience that we're developing at the same time, which will extend the OP experience that kids are watching on TV, online, with a whole suite of games and activities. And we're really building out this photo reel version of the kindergarten online so that kids can go and explore uh, from what they've seen in the episodes, uh, explore the kindergarten environment. There are all kinds of hidden surprises and games and activities for them to play uh, at hiop.com. Wow. Seems like an incredible journey. Absolutely. Production. Absolutely. Now, you both recently won a Canadian Screen Award for Splat a Lot. 
Congrats to both of you. Thank you. How did that feel? Uh, I think it's always uh, a really satisfying feeling to be recognized by your peers in the industry. We, we all, especially your peers, we, we know how hard it is to uh, build a brand, to sell it uh, in the global marketplace, which we've had success with on Splat a lot. I mean, it's a true, it's a true transmedia project, which is what we profess to be as producers, and it's a great demonstration of that success. Again, 120 countries around the world. We sold it, sold it into the U.S. and major territories like the U.K. and Australia. And then on the website as well, have had tremendous success with almost, uh, well, just actually over 150 million gameplays with, oh the, with the web games. So to, uh, to be acknowledged with the Canadian Screen Award um, uh, on Splat a lot, uh, very, very proud and really a testament to the, uh, the creativity and the hard work uh, of the entire team here at Marvel Media and that we've brought on to produce the show with us. And what part of the show are you most proud of? Um, I'm just proud that we built this bloody castle. <laughs> I think it's actually phenomenal. Um, we just don't know what to do with it now. So we're actively looking for people that have uh, castle shows that they uh, that they want produced. Uh, I got a birthday party coming up. Uh, uh, there you go. That's perfect. We, we, we actually built a human catapult in season two, so it, it, it can fling not just kids but adults as well. Oh, well. Just saying. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that that for us, and I mean, I was just up at, at, uh, at our ranch last weekend and, and walking around the castle, uh, even though maybe covered in styrofoam, the fact that, that, that uh, we own this massive piece of, uh, of infrastructure and that we were able to put a team together to really build something, uh, again, that was uh, new, groundbreaking, hadn't been done before, really pushed the boundaries um, to, to create content that, again, was compelling both for kids and for adults, you know, who are watching the show together, that really translated well. Uh, you know, all over the world, uh, and and uh, you know continues to to play and connect with audiences. I think that's that's a huge testament. But there is something that's quite empowering when you stand there and you you look at this five million dollar castle uh, that sits on our property and and think we did that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And like you were saying before, your five year old <laughs> self inside is just going. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. No. And I do get reminded of that. I mean, I have a, a two and a half year old nephew. Uh, and it's great because he's always that that uh, that great you know uh, wide-eyed excitement uh, you know comes up to the castle and is just in awe uh, you know and just always trying to understand you know much like I did when when I was a kid of you know he's seen these shows on on TV and now actually being able to come and experience them um, of course the nice thing is he thinks that Uncle Mark made all of the shows on TV <laughs> which is lovely but uh, no it's great I mean and he was up at the castle you know last fall and just wandering around and just to see his excitement even at a really young age uh, is really exciting oh it must be his favorite yeah. place in the world absolutely oh, yeah. absolutely but he loves coming on the sets of any of the shows right he loves actually coming and seeing it and uh, you know seeing the lights and all the people and I'm sure again as he gets older and, and you know comes more frequently and, and you know, goes behind the scenes that he'll you know, continue to, to have that same excitement. 